welcome to What the Flick. Jason Alonzo looking at the last two nights of the uh, ABC miniseries, When We Rise. Uh, you were saying before this got better. It absolutely got better. I know on the, the last video we were we were a little scared. We we, we were kind of <laughs> disappointed. We had we had some reservations as to the storyline, the content. But I I am I want to apologize to you guys, the viewers, because I have to say that the show got exponentially better yes. once they transitioned from them being in the 60s, 70s right. to adults and, and everything that, that came with but it, so. But don't apologize. The first two nights had problems and we yeah. called them out. We, the... we did, but I, I feel I'm always a stickler for fairness and I feel Fair like we, that we weren't, I was personally wasn't I, giving it a fair shake. Okay, I think there were still problems with the <laughs> second two nights. But a, a friend of mine, this is something that had been kind of kicking around my head and a friend of mine said it last night to me. He goes, this wasn't for us, and, and you know he's like around my age, but and and maybe even not for you necessarily. Like this, this is a show that is super connect the dots, mm -hmm. 101, like entry level. This happened, this happened, this happened. So it, I think it's more for. I, I think the ideal audience of this is maybe like frightened nine-year-old gay kid and his parents who uh -huh. suspect something is happening, but they haven't had the conversation yet. Like they all came together and didn't talk about what they were watching, but they sort of acknowledged that they were learning that this 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 uh, this chain of events. So I think for anybody who goes in knowing anything, it feels like they're rehashing familiar material and maybe it's too exp it's too exposition heavy. But if this is brand new to you, then you know it's all being laid out to you in a very digestible way. I agree, absolutely. It was very digestible. But um, you know, we also talked about Alonzo how it first of all, it's on ABC. Yes. It's it's on Prime, a prime one of the big three prime on a primetime network. And as I wa I rewatched the whole series. I rewatched the first two episodes and I watched wow. the rewatched and I watched the last three because I wanted to get the full I wanted to fully appreciate what I was watching and it was very educational for someone who like as you said for someone who is not familiar with any LGBT struggles, civil rights, human rights for that matter. Yeah. It will definitely shed a light on a lot of things that were, again, relegated to subscription television, after school specials, maybe or documentaries, documentaries or, or, yeah. or specialty programming that, that's not readily available for everyone. There are people who aren't, that aren't that you have to seek it out. You're not gonna no. just have it given to you right after uh, The Bachelor or Grey's Anatomy <laughs> on, on ABC. And right. I do think that the last two episodes or the last two nights of When We Rise were so powerful for me in that I grew up, um, I was born in the 70s and I grew up throughout the 80s and throughout the 90s and I just remember the definitive death sentence that they thought HIV and AIDS was because in the, in the nights of, um, the final two nights, they really touch on um, gay marriage and the the pandemic that is that is AIDS and yeah. you know I've lost family members to AIDS I've I've lost friends to AIDS and I, just growing up it, it really transported me back to a time when there was so much fear so much unknown and and, and so many questions as to what this disease is um, how you contract it and then also how do you care and live and exist in a world where people are affected by this yeah. disease well and again I mentioned this before. Go to Netflix if you're a subscriber, watch the documentary, How to Survive a Plague. I can't recommend this highly enough. It's a, a, a fascinating story about uh, the AIDS pandemic and how ACT UP and, and, and the queer community and, and a lot of allies of the queer community banded together and figured out how to work the system to get the government to get big pharma to get these places to release the drugs to do the testing to do all the stuff that needed to happen because otherwise the left to the government's own devices they were just going to let everybody die. Yeah. Um, so that's you know if if this miniseries inspires people to go check out those documentaries that we talked about you know then then uh, I, I'm all for it. Um, yeah no no I agree and and. It's interesting that you know Cleve Jones did create the the names project, the AIDS quilt. I actually made a panel for the AIDS quilt That's back awesome. in the day, um, but not everybody was in favor of it, you know. And so I, I thought that the scene where they go to act up, as much as the guy playing Larry Kramer was not nearly fiery enough to be Larry Kramer, uh, they 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 touched upon the fact that that yeah, the community was never sort of monolithic about anything, and certainly not about that. The act up people thought that the names quilt was sort of kitsch and it was sentimental and it wasn't really doing anything, but. You know, I, I'm a big believer in the two-pronged approach. You know, if, you, if you're frightened by Malcolm X, maybe MLK seems like a better you know path to follow. And, and you know, you, if you'll you know the, the, the you can you can do the right thing without being scared by the guy who's yelling at you. You know, right. um, so I think for for people who maybe were put off by Act Up's tactics, and I've supported Act Up's tactics, the the names quilt was a, a, a more humane, approachable way for people who maybe weren't as directly impacted by the disease to kind of take it in metaphorically and sort of see what it was about. Uh, I mean, I'm a little older than you and I kind of feel like 
I knew some people who died of AIDS because when I came out in the late 80s, so people my age were very much being indoctrinated by safe sex at that point and, and told to use a condom and all that stuff. Uh, but as I got to know some older members of the community through activism or whatever, they started dying off. And uh, I, the people that I know now who are older than me were that generation of everybody I know is gone. Like yeah. my entire address book is depleted. Um, and for me, it's been more, I think my, my generation was more the, we didn't have a mentor, uh, enough of a mentorship gr growing up because all those people who were immediately ahead of us who had paved the way for us to come out of the closet and to be in a community were gone. Right. I mean, it was it was devastating. We were the generation right after right. this sort of, you know, the Holocaust, basically. So you had to figure it out kind of on your own. In a way, yeah. And and so, uh, you know, I think there's the, the show touches on a lot of that stuff. For me, the most effective moment of this entire eight hour sprawling thing uh, it came at practically the very end when uh, when they get to the marriage equality part. Yeah. And so you've got Cleve Jones sitting in the Supreme Court and Justice Kennedy starts to say something about children. And Cleve flashes back to, you know, uh, to, to, to Anita Bryant and Maggie Gallagher and all the sort of horrible people along the years who, who raised the canard of, oh, think of the children, the, the gays are coming after our children, they're trying to indoctrinate our children, blah, blah, blah. And then Justice Kennedy finishes the sentence by saying, these children in California with same-sex parents want their parents to get married. Right. And for Cleve Jones, it's like, holy shit, like they, they have turned around this whole argument that's been used against us and he even says to the, to the, the 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 defendants in that case who are playing themselves, by the mm -hmm. way, I don't know if you know that uh, the, the 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 lesbian couple and the right. gay couple. Yeah. He says it doesn't. The, the immediacy of this doesn't matter. Like what's happening right now doesn't matter. They just destroyed that argument, and that is completely a, a, a seismic shift. It know? was. It was very powerful too because you didn't think that was going to happen. No. You thought that he was going to, you know, again the go the same down, canard, so, right? Yeah. But and, and it was very powerful. But there were so many powerful moments, Alonzo. Um, for me, getting back to the AIDS quilt when young Cleve is saying, "Write their names. Write their names." After mm. his after his friends Bobby and Marvin had died. Right. I actually cried at that moment because mm. for for a, a, a brief second, you you. Be it gay, straight, lesbian, dog, cat, whoever, you could identify with the pain that this person had. It wasn't, it, it was It was a moment in the show, we were talking about the acting mm. um, previously, and it was a moment in the show to me that was so powerful and so just moved me because I, you, you felt the, the desperate, you, he seemed as if he was tired, like this was like the final straw in a chapter of his life, yeah. that he just, had had enough, and it's like just write their names, write their names. That's, this is all we can do. This is a very, this is as much power as we have in this moment, and it was so moving and just so. I had to watch it twice, and every time I cried. Now I'm not a crier, ladies and gentlemen, and I was just like, oh my god, yes, write their name, <laughs> but give me a marker. I'll write someone's name. You know, it, it was it was definitely powerful, and then it ventured into oh, it's a quill like. <laughs> really, yeah. dude. Really, but you know, <laughs> we, we were talking before about this. There, there were a couple of moments where you know, like when you know, when Ken gets kicked out of the, the, his house after yes. his partner dies, and the family sweeps in, and you know, which was a thing that happened a lot, um, and it still happens. And st well, yeah, but I mean, I think th that's one of the main things I think about marriage that's been important is that it, at least now you have some legal grounds to sort of keep that lease or keep that house or sure. whatever. Um, you know, and then the moment where the the where Cleve is trying to foster child, foster parent that baby, Courtney. and and they just discover the, the AIDS medications and take take Courtney away. And in both cases, uh, Dave and I were watching and thought, this is kind of played overdone, but it probably actually happened almost exactly like that. Like, like, sure. th like it, th these moments in reality were that horrible, you know? And if you present them, yes, it looks like, you know, you must pay the rent, but no, that's that shit went down. Right. That, that, Families were that horrible to the surviving partners of their, you know, gay son who they had never talked to and completely ignored, but then swooped in once he died. Exactly. You know, so like I can't fault the show for overdoing it because that's they they were probably not even overdoing it; they were just doing it. Right. Well, in <laughs> in speaking of Ken's story, I that his story for me resonated um, so much because I, like I said, I am in an in, in an interracial relationship, mm -hmm. and I. I, I thought the whole night, like, what if that was my husband that that died and was taken away from me? And then, you know, uh, how to heal from that? Just Ken's story. I feel like out of all, out of everyone's arc mm -hmm. and everyone's um, place in this story, Ken was probably the most relatable to me. And then also, mm -hmm. he seemed like the, the 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 one that didn't end 
as well, oh God, or not end as well, but possibly didn't fare the fare as good as some of the other, as Cleve or Roma or mm. Dion, um, because he, you know, drug and alcohol abuse, and then he well, just he seemed more destitute, and it seemed like his his story was more bleak than than everyone else's, but. Um, you are right, though. I, I, I did think that it was a little over dramatized in the sense of, you know, he has the baby and he well, he finds this baby in 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 Palm Springs, yeah. and then all of a sudden just takes takes ownership of this baby, which was a miraculous and awesome thing. And then to have it just plucked from his hands was like, wow, that's really shitty. And and you know, in addition to all the other shitty things that right. has happened to him, it's like he can't catch a break. Well, and I think what's interesting with the Ken story, I mean, he does have the hardest road to travel, but again, it kind of comes down to you know, getting that community support and rallying that stuff together. So you've got Roma having created the the women's house yes. and sort of really being ingrained in that stuff. But for Ken, it's like, you know, the gay community is racist, the VA is homophobic. Right. You know, he cannot get a break. He can, you know, he's got the church who wants to take care of him, but they're homophobic also. And, you know, it, it, he's got to finally find that place where he gets to be all the things that he is, which he does. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Felicia Rashad, or whatever the name <laughs> of that <laughs> church <laughs> was. You're right. um, so, yeah, you know, it, the transcendent church. Yeah. So it's, so it's like, you know, the, the, uh, the I love the one struggle, one fight message right. like, that carries through this whole thing. And yeah, so for, for Ken, it's like, you've got to find the people who are going to have your back and all the people who should have along the way didn't right and that's why i think he has the harder time of it did you happen to watch the hour-long special that abc did where they interview all the real people no i did not, I did not watch that if you have a chance go back and watch okay. it because they really kind of compress all of the history of this thing into an hour so like if you if you wanted the cliff notes version you could just watch this special and it's just really fascinating to hear from him and roma and and cleve and deanne who are all still alive uh, you which, know, telling which, their stories which is really cool because these are, you know, a lot when we talk about pioneers and people who have come before us, they, like you said earlier, they're gone. Yeah. So all we have is their written works, or we have old videos, or we have these these um these archived experiences yeah. of them. But knowing that the, that Cleve and that they're still alive is so inspirational. And also talking about Roma and Dion with their storyline, with them having uh, their child and her, you know, coming to terms with having two um two moms. Yeah. It, it also was really cool for me because I have stepchildren. Mm -hmm. And so my partner has has two adult daughters who I've been who I've known when they before they were adults. So nice. um, I thought that it, it's very hard. People think that you know being in a in a, an alternative I should say I guess alternative relationship. I would, you know. Alternative to what? <laughs> I mean, well, <laughs> per the show, per per the no, show, for true. a lot of yeah, people, yeah, yeah, uh, a yes. gay a gay gay a gay relationship is definitely an alternative sure. relationship. They think um, it, it's it, it takes a lot of work. It's very hard, and and it, it takes effort to to blend a lot of elements that come with that. And I thought the show did a fantastic job of showing how great both parents were, yeah. um, and 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 their struggles with their daughter and what she was trying to come to terms with um, terms with too. Um, but yeah. There's just a, there was just a lot of great things about the the last two nights that I was happy came to fruition because I was worried that it was going to continue to be this jam packed um, amalgamation of all these different stories that you really couldn't get a grasp on because there were so many powerful messages that needed to be yeah. portrayed and conveyed for the audience well, to, to to get. And I think as they got closer to the present, they didn't have to have quite as much exposition. Like I think they sort of understood that people maybe knew a few of these things were happening. The wigs got better too. Also, let's let's <laughs> yeah. face it, that's a big deal. Now, one last thing I want to throw out before we have to wrap up. Um, there was a documentary that just came out called uh, "The Freedom to Marry," and it's interesting that uh, when we rise portrays the fight to the Supreme Court as being what Dustin Lance Black was doing, which was the Boys and Olson yeah. case. The Freedom to Marry shows you the uh, Evan Wilson from the organization The Freedom to Marry and Mary Bonato from Gay and Lesbian Advocates and Defenders, and they both worked on the same case and they both went before the Supreme Court at the same time. But if you were to watch one or the other, you wouldn't know that the other existed. And it's like, can we can we just can we get to a place where we can tell the story and tell all of the stories right, and not have to be like, well, this is me, my part and my chunk of this thing is the only thing that happened. You know, there's a lot of stories that go on, and we have to remember that when even when something as sprawling as this, we're seeing a sliver of the many stories and the right. many people that brought things together and made things happen. But it's a start, and I'm you know, I'm glad this exists again. I'm gonna say whatever my problems were, I'm glad it's out there. I'm glad that it's accessible in something like ABC and that that people got to see it. So. And 
you know, the conversation shouldn't just stop here. Um, I think that if you did see Women We Rise, or if you're now, if you're just, too, if you're now figuring out that it was on, because a lot of people didn't even do like When We Rise. A lot of my friends are like, what is that? Is that an album? <laughs> Continue the conversation. Continue to, to, to do the work. If this is something that's inter that has interested interested you and piqued your interest. Do the research. Do, do find out the history because knowledge is power. And and I was. Thoroughly indoctrinated after watching this because believe it or not, there was a lot of things about the, my LGBT history and mm -hmm. about you know um, the Prop 8 and things that I wasn't aware of because for a myriad of reasons, wasn't you know when you're younger you don't really take to a lot of social issues because you're too busy engulfed in your own life. Sure. Of so course. this opened my eyes to a lot of things that really set the, the the cogs going in my mind about equality. So if you're like me, continue the conversation and continue to do your research and continue to become educated because knowledge is power and that's the only way we're gonna to rise above any kind of discrimination, any kind of um, uh, horrible things in the world, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Thanks for watching this Thank you, Alonzo. And uh, we'll see you next time.